Do you have a thyroid problem for which you are doing a blood test frequently? If yes, then this video is must watch for you. Because in this video, I am going to discuss about certain do's and don'ts which you should keep in mind before undergoing a thyroid blood test. If you do such mistakes innocently, then also this can impact on your thyroid blood reports and it can be misinterpreted and your treatment might change. So do watch this video and let's continue. So today we are going to discuss about what are the points to keep in mind before undergoing a thyroid blood test. Now these questions are very commonly asked to me by all my viewers and my patients who visit to me in a clinic. So the very first question is what all testing I have to do? Now see what all testing you have to do for your thyroid imbalance it depends on your case. Whether you are having a hypothyroid or whether you are having a hyperthyroid the test varies but more or less the, the basic line of the test is a thyroid function test now in this thyroid function test there are three main tests which are part of it one is a TSH that is a thyroid stimulating hormone second is a T3 now there are two variants in it one is a total T3 and second is a free T3 and the third one is a T4 Again, we have a two variant in this total T4 and a free T4. Now, what is the difference in these? I will come to that in one more new video. But these three tests are a very routinely asked by a doctor that you should be doing this test. Again, if you have any family history who has a thyroid problem and you might be having an autoimmune thyroid problem, your doctor might ask you to do few antibodies tests. Now two major antibodies we ask a patient of a hypothyroid to do, one is a NTTPO that is anti-thyroid peroxidase enzyme test and the second is a ATG that is anti-thyroglobulin test. If your doctor suspects that you have a hyperthyroid or a Graves disease, in that case we also might ask you to do one more test called as a TSH receptor antibody test also called as a TRAB test. So now these are the last three tests which I mentioned to you, the antibody testings, they are variable and they can change as per your body case. Whatever may be your case, these antibody testings are not to be done very frequently because these antibodies, they are not going to help us in terms of changing your medication powers. And of course, these antibody testings are comparatively little more expensive. So we don't ask patients to do this test again and again in all of their follow-ups. So most of the time, the three tests which you have to do is a TSH, T3 and a T4 testing. Alright, so ask your doctor what all testing you need to undergo. Alright, now, so after this, the next question, when do you have to do this testing? Now see, if you have never had a thyroid problem, and if your body is undergoing some kind of a changes and you're feeling some kind of a symptoms and if you or your doctor suspects that you have a thyroid problem in that case you'll have to undergo this test at that time you can do this test anytime but let's say that you already have a thyroid health problem and you are taking medicines for that then usually after doing any change in your medication dose we ask a person to do a testing minimum six to eight weeks later because it takes six to eight weeks for your thyroid function to change and show that in the form of a report so that is when you have to do the blood test now the next question is do you need to do fasting before undergoing the test now see again there are there are two points in this ideal condition the fasting is usually not recommended however there have been researches and in those researches it is found that when you perform the test when you are not in a fasting state the reports can vary now this variation is a very minute variation however this variation can be very very case sensitive and these conditions like you have a subclinical hypothyroid then people who are undergoing an infertility treatment so in those kind of a situation even this minor variation plays a very big important role 
So keeping that parameter in mind, we always recommend a person to do the testing in the fasting state. Also, one more point should be kept in mind that most of the time, the people who have a thyroid problem, they also tend to have a sugar imbalances and insulin hormone imbalances and even the cholesterol imbalances. In all these three conditions, sugar, insulin and cholesterol, a fasting test are always recommended. So my advice to you, get the testing done in the fasting state. Now, how many hours of fasting? Usually 8 to 10 hours of the fasting is more than enough. And before undergoing the test, probably you can have a glass of a water or a two. It will not change your reports. All right. Now, the next question is, what time of the day do I have to do the testing? Now, see, ideally, it's not mandatory that you have to do the testing at one particular time. Though you can perform the test at any time of the day. However, your thyroid hormone has a circadian rhythm of the flow. And your thyroid hormones are at the peak level between night 11 o'clock to morning 5 o'clock. And the level starts plummeting down and it becomes the level of the nadir between evening 5 p.m. to evening 8 p.m. So in an ideal scenario, what we recommend that you do the testing early morning around 8 to 9 o'clock in the morning. This is the best time so that even if there's a minor variations are there, they can be missed. Right. Now let's talk about the stress. Now many people are stressed because they have to do the blood test. Many people are scared of the blood testing. Many people are scared. What will my results come? So, you know, these kind of a fear and a stress can also have an effect on your blood test. So when you are under the stress, okay, what happens? In our stomach, in our abdomen, we've got a kidney. On top of a kidney, we've got a gland called as the adrenal gland. Now, this adrenal gland makes a stress hormone. And this stress hormone is called as a cortisol. So the moment you are under the stress, your cortisol levels will rise. And the moment cortisol levels rise, your thyroid uh, stimulating hormone, that's a TSH, and your thyroid hormones T3 and T4 levels starts going down. So before going a test, if you are under a lot of stress, then your thyroid reports may vary and it might come wrong. So go in a relaxed state and just Pay attention to your blood test and if you are under stress, do some meditation, do some yoga or a pranayam which can help you in reducing your stress level. So these are the certain points which you need to keep in mind before you undergo a test. Now the next question is the laboratory. Do I need to change the laboratory? Now in ideal situation, please stick to the same laboratory which you are using it. Now, again, while selection of the laboratory is also very, very important, especially in the major cities, we have a, a better uh, medical care and a better infrastructure. So I always recommend my patients to undergo a test which, from a laboratory which is NABL accredited. Now, they have some standardized and that's the reason why the reports are relatively more reliable. Now, when we are doing a thyroid function test, usually for the TSH, we use the ELISA method. Now, by the way, TSH is the most important test among all the thyroid hormones because this is a very sensitive test, very easy to perform test and not very expensive. And TSH is a one test on the basis of which we can alter your treatment program also. So TSH test best is the ELISA test and this is usually performed in a better environment when the laboratory is a better laboratory. Do not keep changing a lab from one to another because every laboratory has a different way of uh, doing your blood test and every laboratory has a different reference range also. All right. If by the chance if you have changed your laboratory and if your results come different than what you expect in that situation, it is advisable that you repeat your testing again from a better laboratory. Before undergoing a test, do inform your doctor and the laboratory person if you are pregnant. 
because when you are going to be pregnant at that time the thyroid hormone levels vary and your reports might differ and your treatment plan also might differ so do inform your doctor and do inform the laboratory uh, person also the phlebotomist that if you are a pregnant another question which a women especially ask doctor can we do this testing in during the menstruation during the periods time answer is yes you can do this testing during the period time and very very less fluctuations which we have seen if you do the testing during the menstruation now another question which usually people have what if on the day of the testing if i'm not feeling good now see if on the day of the testing if there is a one day where you are having a fever or something we advise you that not to do the testing let your general health become all right and then you do the blood testing all right especially if you have a condition like a diarrhea or loose motions then in that case what will happen the medicine which you are going to consume it will not be absorbed properly so your thyroid reports can again be misinterpreted then there is a some special condition where they which uh, where a person is admitted in the hospital and most likely for a severe illness or the patient is admitted in a icu setting in that time if we do the blood testing again your test can be very very misinterpreted this condition is called as a sick u thyroid syndrome by the way i will make a separate video on a sick u thyroid syndrome wherein i will talk in detail about it but what is it whenever a person is under any kind of severe infection or a several stressful body health like probably after a surgery or after an accident or after a heart attack in such situations if we do your thyroid blood testing it can come uh, misinterpreted and your tsh and t3 and t4 all the levels can come low so during this during the acute such illnesses again we usually don't recommend a blood testing on a routine basis but yes usually in the hospital setting we do such testing at that time to check whether you have any other thyroid issue or not now coming to the one more important point and that is the medications now many people of the thyroid are taking plenty plenty many other medicines also few points to keep in mind first is that medicine which we call is a biotin now people who have a thyroid problem also have a hair fall issue and to counter that many times people take over the counter drug called as a biotin these are usually a supplements and they are safe to take but however if you are taking the biotin supplements then this can also have an effect on your thyroid blood test so when you are going to do a thyroid blood test 2 to 3 days prior to your blood test you can stop the biotin one more drug that is a lithium now lithium is usually taken by people who have some kind of a psychiatric problem or a depression so if you are going to take a lithium then again your reports may change another drug is the amiodarone now amiodarone is usually prescribed to the people who have a heart problem so if you are taking amiodarone again you need to be careful then many people are taking iodine supplements and a kelp tablets if you are going to take that again your reports might change so inform your doctor about it so your doctor can take an informed decision then there are certain cancer drugs then there are certain uh, immunomodulator drugs now these immunomodulator drugs like interferon alpha interleukin 2 such kind of immunomodulator drugs can also have an effect on your thyroid blood test now a very very important point people always ask doctor do i need to take medicine on the day of the blood test or i don't have to take the blood test now see there is no uh, solid proof uh, answer to that but yes there are certain researches and in that research it is found that if you don't take the medicine on the day of the testing your results will not vary a much now why is that so because see understand the thyroid medicine which you are taking the levothyroxine now this levothyroxine the half life is a 7 days so it will take a minimum 7 days for your body to clear off that a uh, medicine so if you have taken the medicine or if you have forgot to take the medicine your results will not vary much many a times people get very scared that oh my god i forgot to take the medicine now my reports will be bad no it will not happen and there is no problem to be stressed about it but yes do inform your doctor 
and please maintain a very similar kind of a habit same laboratory same timing and the same whether you are taking the medicine on that day or you are not taking the medicine it's completely optional but you can stick to the same kind of a time schedule so that always your reports are going to be uh, continuously and they are going to be synchronized with all your past reports also but yes if you are taking a medicine called as a t3 now many people take a t3 supplements now the t3 hormone uh, half life is a different than a t4 hormone half life the t3 hormone half life varies anywhere between 18 hours to 3 days yes it varies from person to person so if you are going to take a t3 supplement then in that case your thyroid report might be different so please keep that point in mind usually in a country like india people are mostly taking a thyroxine that's a levothyroxine t4 hormone supplement and if you even if you skip to take that medicine on that particular day it will not make a very big change all right so these are the certain points which you need to keep in mind next time before you undergo a blood test if you have any question pertaining to this you can leave your question in the comment box and i will be happy to answer that all right and if you have not watched my other videos we have made a complete series of the thyroid hormones and if you have not watched you can watch those videos as well after watching this video if you have got some important insights and information please click on the like button and spread some love and if you want to watch future videos you can subscribe to my channel and there is a bell icon if you click on that you will get instant notification the moment i upload my new videos thank you for joining me till now and i wish you a great health and namaste thank you